Welcome back to Youth in Politics. I'm Justin Schnett, and once again, I'm joined with District 2 Republican Congressional Candidate John Ferry. You said in our last segment that you don't agree with the rebate checks. How can we return this nation to fiscal responsibility? Well, to start, we can bounce some, say, two-thirds of the incumbents out of Congress. Now, this isn't going to guarantee anything about their successes, but it will make the new congressman afraid. And it's good that they should be afraid because they've been making a horrendous mess of the Republicans and Democrats together. See, the Democrats adhere to an old model. FDR's uh, national chair, Jim Farley, summed it up this way. Tax, tax, spend, spend, elect, elect. The Republicans hit upon a new model. Cut taxes, cut taxes, spend, spend, elect. Oops, that didn't quite work out as they'd hoped. So now we're stuck with a huge and growing deficit. And this is the price of value of the dollar. And since we have to buy... Uh, Oh, what, three quarters of our uh, gas or petroleum products overseas, that means the price of those products goes up as the dollar goes down. This is the reward for their extravagance. Do you support increased offshore drilling? Yes, I do. I do, in fact. I believe that the U.S. government itself estimates that between Alaska, answering any question there, and offshore that we have 198 billion barrels of recoverable oil. Uh, at $100 a barrel, we're talking close to $20 billion. And uh, academic studies have estimated we still, by 2050, be getting something like 80% of our energy from fossil fuels. Now, that money is either going to spent the $20 billion or $20 trillion, or at a more realistic price, $60 a barrel. You're down around less than 10, no, I'm sorry, a little bit over uh, $10 trillion. They either go into American coffers or they go off to countries, most of which are very friendly towards us. Okay, let's turn to the issue of health care reform. This is a quote off your website. All the major plans are just reshuffling the deck in the never-ending quest to stick someone else with the bill. No candidate has the guts yet to tell the American people the, the truth as to the cost of health care. Already the highest in the world continues to spiral out of control. With that being said, is what is your plan for health care reform and how much would it cost? Now, here's a problem for me. As I said, just a few months ago, I had no plan for health care. And in the busy uh, course of this campaign, I haven't really worked one out in toto. I do think that the precondition for a successful plan is, first of all, to examine the European plans with a particular eye on the failures and examine the question of, well, let's see, what do we benefit from having 71 of the lawyer percent of the lawyers in the known universe? What do we pay for all these huge awards given in legal suits against the medical profession? What do we pay in terms of uh, uh, <coughs> insurance, malpractice insurance? These would all be preconditions. We have to consider to what degree the European health care plans write people off in the last year of their life, because we spend a huge sum of money on that, preserving people the last year of their lives. What percentage of the uh, European health plan care plans are devoted to saving premature babies? Americans are more inclined to take extravagant measures to do that, whereas the Europeans write them off. If we were to come to a realistic understanding of the comparative cost, we'd have to examine with a critical eye the other options. There's no point in saying, ah, single payer, it works in Canada, so we're going to adopt it. That is sheer folly. Okay. Education seems to be a center point of your candidacy as you are a retired professor. Do you believe that the No Child Left Behind Act is a good initiative, or does it leave every child behind? My general principle is any piece of legislation that's 1,000 pages long is doomed to create a complete mess. The only thing the government does successfully is what proceeds on simple principles. Social Security originally was based on simple actuarial simple principles. The whole idea of encouraging home ownership through interest deduction. Another one which was successful, as soon as they start elaborating 
paragraph after paragraph, clause after clause, they're going to create a bureaucratic nightmare. There is no way that could be averted. That is an absolute iron law of experience. I can't prove it theoretically, but you can't find me historical exception. Okay, do you support standardized testing such as the SATs? Yes, I suppose I do. Just as a means of imposing discipline on a on a science of uh, education which is largely hocus pocus. Okay. Most Democrats consider the Iraq War to be one of the worst foreign policy blunders in U.S. history. As a U.S. representative, what would be your plan and strategy for the Iraq War? Would you pull out? Do you support the timetables for troop withdrawal? What would be your strategy? Well, first of all, addressing the, the assessment of the quality of the disaster of this foreign policy, bear in mind that most Democrats, if you quiz them on diplomatic history, at great length with the help of 400 watt lamp and rubber truncheons might be able to fill a cocktail napkin with all they know of diplomatic history. In fact, there are a lot of competitors for the worst bungle in American history. We won't go into these in a limited time, but I guarantee you there are plenty. So what about Iraq? What about Iraq is this. Iraq is supposed to be, ideally, in a world of adult politics, part of a discussion about the larger issue of national security. Going back to the reasoning behind this invasion was as follows. The weapons of mass destruction are growing cheaper, they're growing more accessible. This is inevitable, cannot be prevented. Terrorism appears to be growing more common. The 9-11 incident suggested the U.S. would be a very vulnerable target. So the thinking was that Saddam's Iraq could be a source of weapons of mass destructions made available to terrorists. I understand, of course, the intelligence evaluation is a subject of intense debate, but we're not going to get into that. My point, however, is this is a question of national security, and it's completely lost in all this chatter about Iraq. As far as getting out immediately, it's not going to happen. If Barack Obama is elected, it won't happen then either. The Democrats have been talking that way for some time and threatening to cut off funding, but they haven't, and the reason they haven't is we can't predict what's going to happen in the long run staying. We can't predict what's going to happen getting out. If we stay in, Bush takes the rap. If we get out, they take the rap. So no, they're never going to, they're never going to cut off funding. Okay, in, in 10 seconds, explain your campaign slogan, elect fairy, impeach ignorance. Well. I suppose I'd have to admit there's a good deal of ignorance on the part of the voters as well and a lack of curiosity. They get kind of fed up, I think, as polls indicate. But uh, as for my opponent, I don't want to go into great detail. He's a nice fella, but he doesn't know diddly about anything except getting elected. How was that? Ten seconds worth? That's great. Thank you so much for coming on the program. Well, thanks for having me. And thank you for watching Youth in Politics. I'm Justin Chenette. Remember to become aware with issues of the day, get involved in your community, and vote on the November 4th general election. This has been Youth in Politics. See you next time. Yeah, Justin.